Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Eden Zero episode number 18. Okay, the previous episode, it was <laughs> truly one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen how they actually, uh, m you know, made Xiaomi a part of the story. And I, like, I had a little bit of, uh, what can I say? Like, I knew that they were probably going to do that in the future, but not this fast and not in this manner like you know like i thought that she will probably be some character who is in the story but it's basically kind of different because she's not she's, she's part of the story but at the same time she's kind of not part of the story but she's kind of like uh what can i say um a different type of a being living in a completely different place where time is at uh like you know where time is stopped and she's like living in this uh, house, a huge, huge mansion where there's like nothing. Once you step in, there's like, uh, like it, it's, it feels as if you're in, in, like, you know, in space. And then like, you know, she has these type of uh, powers, unique powers, which like, I don't know, like it, it's like she, she, she's type of like, I did not expect her to be actually introduced in this manner. And I think uh, it, it, it like, you know th this makes the mystery even more because i thought like she'll be introduced as a character and that will be it but there are more questions now like sh she's like a character who is just there you know uh, like kind of like uh what can i say a character who can actually interact with the main characters the eden zero characters and at the same time she's interacting with us in a way you know as a narrator she's like basically talking to us <laughs> like very interesting stuff i was not expecting that like you know and uh, yeah it, it's great and I, I i i love to see more of her what she is what type of a being she is and if, if there are some other mysteries that's need, that needs to be uh, you know revealed about her and i'm sure there there's a lot more about her that we don't know and probably will get to know in the future and uh, I'm quite excited for that. So yeah, anyways, like that, the main focus of that episode was Xiaomi and I, I just loved that. And it, it was so well done. And I'm quite ex like, you know, quite excited to see what happens. And I'm guessing uh, the scene that we always seen in the opening, the tournament that uh, Valkyrie and Homura were having is going to happen here. And uh, like, you know, in this episode, because you can see the tournament ring and probably they will have to fight i'm not sure so yeah let's see what happens so yeah guys without further ado let's get started this is episode number 18 of eden zero so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay so here's the countdown three two one go million battle colosseum <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's very boring. Oh, she won't know who'll win here or something? Whoa, what the hell? Yo, calm down. Damn. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Whoa. Oh boy. Well. Oh. <laughs> Quite different for her. One of her warriors. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look at the smile. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, obviously. Oh, that's what she's saying. Like she can see it, but she doesn't know which one will be. 
<laughs> Convenience confirmed. Okay, I kind of understood what she's saying. She's basically saying that there are two paths and I know it will go either way, but I don't know which way it will go. <laughs> so she's saying that I don't know what will happen to this tournament. And all right. Well, like thinking about it like that, how can she actually know the future where there's a lot of actual possibilities like parallel worlds, you know, like, for example, just like she says here, like a branch in the timeline, like she knows what's going to happen in both the timelines. But like, you know, a simple thing can actually change which timeline this world will take. I'm guessing she knows that. I'm guessing she knows the actual trigger, which is going to make the characters choose a certain path. I think so. And since she knows obviously the, like, you know, uh, existence of parallel worlds, I'm also guessing she also knows what's, what's going to happen in the parallel worlds as well. Like, for example, if what will happen if they win here, what's going to happen after that? And what's going to happen if they don't win here? Obviously, their future will change vastly because she'll give an information which is crucial to that journey if they win. So if they don't win, I'm guessing it will go in a completely different direction. And that's why she's saying that I, I won't know what's going to happen, which like, will you win or will you lose? Which path you're going to take? Okay, anyways. All right. <laughs> okay. And who's the opponent? Whoa, what the? Then Sorg. What the? This is in the mustache. Metal bogey. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> okay. All right. Whoa. Wait, is that it? I don't think so. <laughs> the spectators. Wait, really? Uh Okay. <laughs> wow. Her character really changed. <laughs> well, this is a tournament, so I guess. And as expected of mothers, what? But is he, is, he, is he like the mother's child or something? <laughs> Rude, okay. Infinity. Okay, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> um... Hopefully, <laughs> damn that the faces that they make <laughs> making in this episode. Oh, um, hmm. Oh, so you need to defeat all of them. Okay, Rebecca versus? Yeah, Happy needs to be here. Okay, yeah.
All right. Okay, let's see the opponent. Oh my god. Oh. Cosmic Fleetwood Champ. Um. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah. Don't judge a book by its cover. I think. Wait. She knows. Oh. Okay. Part time. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. What the hell? Whoa. <laughs> well, Rebecca's also okay. Whoa, he even has a shield. The address sign. Whoa. Oh, great. <laughs> Won't he get banned or something <laughs> if she uploads this? <laughs> you get banned before that, but I don't know the terms sense of services. So of of this world. Punch him. Wait, oh boy. <laughs> and okay. <laughs> Let's go <collab>. out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's why she, okay. Chapter for the future. Okay, the battles are quite easy up until now, so let's see. <laughs> How is he going to fight? Flee from Whoa, he has Aether Gear. Okay. Wait, is that a kangaroo? Um, that's not a dog. That's a dog. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. <laughs> Whoop, there you go. Now smack him. A good old smack. <laughs> or, uh, okay. <laughs> no, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, like... And wow, these battles are very easy. But but I'm guessing the next one will be Homura versus Valkyrie. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't think so. Okay, so here it is. I definitely don't think that this is the actual Valkyrie. This must be some kind of a different, I don't know. Because they're actually doing this to know her, where she is. So if Valkyrie is here, why would they even need that? So I'm guessing it's some kind of a 
I don't know, some kind of a, uh, what can I say, like a different thing or something, like, you know? Special arrangement. Replica, there you go. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Wow, Shivan. Oh. Okay. All right, calm down. Whoa, okay. We can see yeah. Whoa. Oh, I didn't even notice that. God. Foot, foot, foot. Yeah. Her f like, you know, like, as she said, she knows her weaknesses. She's... <sighs> oh. Oh. Um... Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, oh well. Okay. Oh, is this a backstory? Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, that little, we saw that in the ending, that little teddy bear or whatever that is. That's, that's in her hand. Oh, she's bleeding. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh, that's why she always like, you know, says whatever that's in her mind. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Oh yeah, okay, but come on, you can use- Ah, there you go. Ah, he tri she tricked her. Whoa, whoa. Oh, 
Okay, she actually used her weakness as a bait. <laughs> wow. Okay, nice. There you go. Yeah, she could dodge it. <laughs> All right, the one. All right, calm down now. <laughs> Whoa. Wait. Oh, okay. oh yeah, it was a replica. Oh! Oh wait, it was just an illusion or something? Oh, what she knew. Alright. Mm, yeah, obviously. Okay. Ah, man, they're going back again. Okay, we're back here again. <laughs> okay. Damn, the throne. <laughs> okay. Planet with splendor and gloom. Oh, wow, that looks beautiful. Wow, the designs of this anime is so good. Uh, um. One more piece of knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Does exist somewhere in this universe. Well, yeah, obviously. Oh, okay, interesting. All right, okay. Yeah, that means she met her and got this power. Yeah, she doesn't even remember that. Great saucers. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> What's Shiki's wish? I never thought about it. Don't find the wrong hands. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, she's talking up to us again. Sun Jewel, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ha, wow, all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs>
Okay. Wow, as always, a great episode. And <clears throat> now, one thing I, I have to say here is like <laughs> the designs, the the character designs, beat the character designs, and like you know, and all the mm, different uh, things here, like you know, the planets especially have such amazing unique design and i think uh like i've also like you know this this i think this is like hiro mashima's one of the biggest talents that he has like character designing like even in fairy tale like every character was unique in so many ways and like eden zero shows that even more with the different you know designs of the like look at the four shining stars each and every one of them are so different and so unique in the character designing i really love that and not only the characters the planets like the uh like you know this planet i forgot it, this planet's name i forgot uh the, uh, the time thing like you know it's it, it it looks like a clock a big golden clock and uh the the sun jewel planet as we saw like you know it, it's as if like it's filled with gems gemstones okay that the end yeah filled with gemstones like you know different colors like like the character designs are amazing and i like you know this is this is definitely one of hiro mashima's talent as uh like you know uh like this this was also seen in fairy tale fairy tale also has some really cool designs of characters and different things and uh, this, is, this is just so good and <clears throat> yeah I, I just love it and i'm i'm really looking forward to what like you know what else different type of uh, planets we're going to see and not only plans the characters as well because uh as i said the character designs are also too damn good especially the uh, uh four shining stars their character designing and so many things like i yeah that, that's really impressive all right so this episode here um <clears throat> you get a little fight a little tournament mini tournament in a way where these like our four characters and her four uh like, you know uh what do you call them four fighters fight against each other if they win they're going to get uh, valkyrie's location and yeah we had the fight now <laughs> obviously the the enemies were quite simple like not at all like the enemies that we fought before it was very easily like you know she basically ended the fight in one punch um rebecca also in one kick and <laughs> wise <laughs> basically using emp and then <laughs> kicking the opponent <laughs> and uh, winning so valkyrie's battle was a little bit more uh difficult but at the same time it was not that difficult as well because i'm sure homura could have handled uh like you know a lot more like as homura said that uh this is nowhere near valkyrie's actual power level and zame also revealed in the end that that was basically a training dummy so yeah now <clears throat> Uh, yeah, as I was saying, so basically what happened with Homura is she, like a few things actually I'm guessing kind of made her, uh, like, you know, hesitate a bit in the beginning, which was first of all, suddenly seeing her, like, you know, Valkyrie after so long time and, you know, like that kind of made her very obviously confused and at the same time, very uh, restless. So she was unable to actually you know fight properly in the beginning fight with his with her full power and valkyrie as she knew everything about uh homura and like obviously like that was not valkyrie like we know like that as uh Jaume said that it's basically my information my knowledge that you got to know uh that, that uh, this valkyrie knew now as she said she is the person who knows the present past and the future so obviously she knows everything about homura so that's why she like you know i'm guessing she inputted those type of uh information into the training dummy as like you know like she is quite weak you know her weaknesses uh and how you know what she likes what she dislikes how they met all of these things and uh, like using that uh like you know like as we saw in the beginning when they were fighting 
her Valkyrie was always like you know targeting her leg and she was she usually did not notice like you know pay more attention to it but in in a way she kind of used that against Valkyrie in the end she actually baited her to thinking that she's still making the same <laughs> mistake to actually make her make a mistake make Valkyrie make a mistake and like you know re reduce her guard and she countered you know uh, Homura countered at that and won the match so that's very like you know uh, quite intelligent for her and uh, yeah all right so one thing that i wanted to uh, talk about here is as i was kind of talking about this while reacting to it is the whole uh, thing that um homura and uh, said that she knows what's going to happen uh, like uh, i think pino asked that pino asked that question or who was it someone of them asked her the question that if you don't know who's going to win here how do you know what's going to happen in the future now obviously like uh like you know that whenever like time travel and these type of multiple worlds like you know parallel worlds come into play usually i like you know there's like, like a mistake that a lot of people actually make they actually think of it as like you know like they think time is like step by step which whatever happens no, like after one uh, certain thing happens and another thing happens and then another thing happens and like you know they, they like, like what can i say like it, it's the conventional way of thinking like like we think that yeah today this is going to happen tomorrow this is going to happen and the next day this is going to happen but time is not like that uh, i think the, i think pino asked the question like i think pino was confused like she thought that okay if she does not know what's going to happen in the middle how is she going to know whatever what's going to happen after that but obviously time is not like that you can definitely know something is going to happen but at the same time uh you like you know you as uh Jaume said that i know what's going to happen i know the result but i don't know which path like you know you're going to take and uh like you know like and even if she doesn't know what's going to happen in the middle she know how the outcome will be that's basically it she doesn't know the result but she knows the outcome so that's how she knew what was going to happen and that's how she knows what's going to happen in the future and since this is a whole uh parallel world theory where she basically says that i know the two branches where you might go either you win either you lose i know that but i don't know which one will happen here that's one thing that she kept herself uh, from knowing so that she can get more excited ex excitement out of this tournament as she was saying like you know like it's delicious it's delicious and so yeah so she basically knows the path but she didn't know which path they, they're going to take and that was the excitement for her and obviously like she like as we saw by the end of it uh, each and every uh, what do you call it each and every uh, match they won and they got the information now now I'm sure like there is an, another parallel world here where they did not win the match. No, maybe there's another parallel world here. Definitely there's a parallel world here. And I'm sure Homura, uh, Jaume also knows what is going to happen in that parallel world. So just a sec. Oh my God. Freaking insect. <laughs> okay. Um, what's going to happen? Uh, she, she also knows what's going to happen in that parallel world. So maybe like you know if, if they lo lost over here maybe they would have have to figure out themselves where Valkyrie is and it would have probably taken a bit more longer time maybe some more adventures and by the end of it they would have probably gotten to know where Valkyrie is but the future would be vastly different from this future because of the extra time that they would have taken to actually figure out where Valkyrie is a lot of things would have happened the timeline would have gotten completely different from this uh, uh like you know this part that they're taking so it's like this basically like it's like infinite possibilities as they say so interesting like as she said like you know i know what's going to happen but i don't know which path you're going to take that was basically it <coughs> and uh yeah okay that was that and we got about a little bit of uh homura's backstory where we see how like homura's village got attacked i'm guessing and Valkyrie came there and saved Homura and uh, as Homura said that she doesn't have parents I'm not sure maybe like you know they something happened to them maybe they're not alive or something or maybe she doesn't know where they are either of it 
and she was basically alone and she held the little teddy bear thing now we always see that teddy bear in the ending i'm guessing it has some kind of significant uh, role in the future i'm not sure but yeah anyways okay so and then uh <clears throat> like the thing that uh like we actually get to realize why well uh why Ho why homura always slips like you know like always says stuff whichever that she's thinking like you know she always <laughs> blurts out stuff and she's like oh my god i was not supposed to say that <laughs> so it's basically uh valkyrie's i'm guessing valkyrie's uh influence as homura in the beginning was kind of hesitating to say anything and as valkyrie says that talk you know talk like you know uh Com talking gives you strength or something like that what what does she say just a sec okay just a sec i'm valkyrie uh, say it words will give you strength yeah that's it words will give you strength and i'm sure after that like you know from from that um <coughs> uh, homer actually changed the way she like you know what can I say? Her, uh, what can I say? Her, her, her that uh, like she started talking more, and like nowadays she actually blurts out most of that she's supposed to say, I guess. <coughs> yeah. All right. And uh, <coughs> yeah. And then they win the uh, match. <laughs> Jaume is happy. And she tells us where Valkyrie is, gives her the uh, information. And a few more information we got to know here. Number one is, uh, I think that thing Xiaomi kind of said in the beginning, which only we as like, you know, spectators know, is that when she said that, oh, like I knew she was going to win, like uh, as expected of mothers and dot, 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 dot. So who knows? <clears throat> like, you know, anything can, can be in that dot, 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 dot. Anything can be. Uh, it can be <coughs> maybe mother's child. I'm not sure. Maybe mother's um, what else? Something like some kind of uh, you know family member. I I don't know. Like or maybe some different type of being. And uh, anything. Shiki can be anything. But one thing that we can know is that Shiki is related to mother some way. And uh, yeah, and so another question pops up here is so Ziggy found Shiki, and I don't think Ziggy met mother before. No, she he did not meet mother before. So ah uh, yeah, we don't have much information here. Like you know, I can't say much things here, but unless and until I get more information. Because we don't even know where Ziggy got Shiki, Shiki from. We only know that Ziggy got Shiki, and from after that she de he decided to go back to, <clears throat> like you know, to the planet and live there. And she he even told the other shining stars that I'm going to like you know go back and raise Shiki. If you any of you wants to come, you can come or you can go on your own path. And like you know, like after that the story starts. So that's the basic information that we have about Shiki. We don't even know from where Ziggy got Shiki from. So I'm sure we'll get to know that in the future and more clues will pop out and we're going to, like, you know, slowly, slowly, gradually figure out who actually mother is and who actually Shiki is. Yeah. Okay. So another thing, another information we have here is uh, mother, as, as Zame says, that mother actually exists. Mother, uh, I met mother. And she, she says that I supposedly met mother, but she doesn't remember that as she says, you know, because she, that's the uh, thing that she has to, you know, she forgot because she got her power of, <clears throat> you know, uh, seeing the future past and all that thing. So I'm guessing maybe like, you know, Xiaomi was also like a traveler or something who once like, was like a normal human. She, she traveled with maybe some friends or something and finally reached uh mother and made a wish or something you know and mother uh fulfilled that wish only with a one small disadvantage that she'll forget everything about mother where she is and you know anything and everything she'll forget and she is now like this you know in this place like she knows everything and all that stuff so yeah 
who knows maybe in the future we'll get some xiaomi backstory i'm really interested in that if, if they really give us that you know because i'm quite interested in as to like you know why would she even choose a wish like this where she basically knows everything maybe something happened in her past who knows you know maybe because of that she actually asked for a wish like this that i want to know everything past present future and yeah i know i don't know so maybe in the future but that's I'm, I'm guessing that will be a long time in the future you know if we actually get some backstory of Xiaomi. so <laughs> yeah anyways and uh, okay another thing another thing that Xiaomi says is quite interesting is she says that there are a lot of people who will actually try to go for mother but there will also be a lot of people who i mean try to use her for bad like, you know for their own selfish reasons and, and bad stuff so she says something like try to uh, what, what did she say try to um not let mother fall into bad hands or something like that like like i don't know that that sentence kind of seems as if you know like mother herself is actually someone who who's in like obviously i think so that's the basic thing here that mother is a neutral you know a, a neutral candidate here Wh whoever whatever people will come to her and ask her for a wish she'll she'll fulfill it be it bad be it good so that's why i think most probably xiaomi said that that don't let her fall into bad hands so yeah so you know like uh and i don't know maybe maybe yeah maybe that was the reason that that must be the reason because uh like yeah like what would happen if uh you know a bad person a very bad person reaches mother and he says something like oh i want to rule the world or something you know i'm i'm sure mother will uh fulfill the wish as i said like you know as far as my impression goes mother is a neutral uh character so if something like that happens huh, the world is doomed so that's why see she said something like i don't let her fall into bad hands and obviously this is something that's going to probably never going to happen or might happen but it, it has very small possibility of happening because mother is a person who we don't even know where she is like, you know and there are like very less amount of people actually reaching her very less so obviously like if it happens it will happen but uh, like you know it will be like you know not everyone will be able to go and reach mother so yeah like the risk is there but it, it's not that much but who knows maybe we will meet a character in the future who will like you know who will see that actually is able to uh, reach mother or maybe like you know i don't know like maybe shiki and that person will have a fight or something and they'll like you know something like that will happen and as she says that shiki will try not to uh, let mother fall into uh, bad hands wrong hands and yeah i don't know so yeah that was it so yeah guys that was it that was my reaction to episode okay let me see was there anything else just a sec um oh and then in the end zame says that okay i'll go back to my original <laughs> job that is narrating this story for you <laughs> so yeah maybe maybe in the future uh, shiki and all of them will meet xiaomei again and as i said uh, the next episode i'm guessing they're going to start on their journey to go to sun jewel and uh, the planet looks beautiful you know and as i said before the character designs of this anime is just phenomenal i love it so yeah all right that was it guys so thank you guys for watching if you guys enjoyed my reaction be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed be sure to comment down below anything you want to say or anything you want to let me know i'll check them out so yeah guys thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next week with another episode of eden zero so until then goodbye and have a nice day